Hi, the purpose of this week's video is to walk you through some of the book files, then take a look at what your assignment might look like when it's done this week. First file that I wanted to go over with you is this multipage.xlsm. It's one of the book files, and this is a project that it's not a game. It's actually uh, showing you how to use forms and showing you how forms can interact with worksheets. So this is something that, although this one's just doing simple calculations, uh, it's something that you may actually do uh, in an Excel file that you have. You may have to do it for work or for some personal reason. But if there's ever anything you need to do that you want to be a little more like an application or a custom developed program and less like a regular spreadsheet, this will do it for you. So here we just have some sample numbers. If we say show form, we're now working with a sophisticated form just like you could develop in any other programming language such as the full-blown Visual Basic uh, or any of the other languages in Visual Studio. So we have buttons here, we have labels, we have multiple tabs, uh, we have drop-down boxes, list boxes, and you'll notice here that it's actually integrated with the worksheet. So here we see a list of all the different uh, workbooks that we have open, and then here are listed the different sheets in each book. So this is using some of the concepts from last week, integrating with Excel, also using some of the concepts from this week, which are the forms and all the controls that can be placed on the forms. And this also has a ref edit control. The ref edit control is something unique to Excel. This is what allows you to select a group of cells and perform some function on them. So you may have seen this ref edit box before in some of the built-in Excel functions. We click this, it asks us to select a range so we can select any group of numbers and then return to our form. Now in this case, the program is going to look at the numbers that we selected and do some different functions on them. So if we hit calculate, we can get the count of those numbers, the sum of those numbers, the minimum, the maximum, and a number of other useful pieces of information. And if we like, we can click add to summary and that will move it over to the summary tab and save it. This is the blackjack game that goes along with this chapter and like the last form this one also integrates with the spreadsheet. It uses the spreadsheet to keep track of uh, whether the dealer or the player won and what the balance is. Clicking the blackjack button will actually bring up the game. Here you can decide how many decks you want to use. There's a second form that pops up and does the shuffling of the cards. You can then use this drop down to select how much you'd like to bet. Deal the cards, decide if you want to hit or stand. In that case, the dealer won. You can then deal again. In that case, I won. And you can see back here it's keeping track of what each player had and what the balance is. Our assignment for the week is much simpler than either one of those. Question one just asks you to show and hide a form using buttons on the sheet. So hitting show here shows my form, which is empty. I could have put some controls on here, and if you'd like to put some controls on this form, you may. Uh, just be careful. Uh, check out the instructor notes and look at the tip, and make sure you don't put a ref edit box on this form. Using a ref edit box on a form that's modeless can cause Excel to lock up. If you're not sure what modal and modeless means, uh, definitely check that out. That's some important terminology and it's covered in the chapter. So here I can hit the X to close this form, but what the assignment asks you to do is actually have a button called hide that will hide the form as well. So that's question one. And then question three is the other question that was assigned for this week. And in that challenge, you're to create a form with a list box control and you're to use the add item method of the list box control to display all the contents of column A. Now I gave you some hints in the assignment uh, because you actually don't want to do everything that's in column A. It could take a while for that to populate since there are, are you know, thousands and thousands of rows. So what I did was modify mine to just use the first 100 rows and I recommend you do that as well. And furthermore, I told it to ignore any rows such as row A8, A10, A11, where there's nothing in the cell. That way you won't end up with a list box with 
a uh, bunch of empty spaces in it. So if I click Command button 3, it pops up my second form. In this form, I have a list box control. And you can see here, the items listed in this list box are the same as the items listed over here. Just to show you that that's actually working and that I didn't type those in myself, I'll go ahead and change some of these values and hit it again. And here you can see the values of my list box have been updated as well.